good morning here we go I'm just looking at the pot with the flowers on it and that um you can't so much see it i don't think the i'll just show you what i'm looking at here <clears throat> i quite like the sweep upwards of those few there so that's what i'm aiming to do from my angle <clears throat> in watercolor this morning and I think you can see pretty much what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> and if you want a photograph of the flowers from my angle, just let me know. Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. So where am I going to start here, I wonder? It kind of looks like the pot is a little bit like this. Probably because of the opera rose pink. I feel like I wouldn't mind starting with something in the pot. Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go for a collage. I might just start with, um, I'll start with the paint. And with my eyes half closed, I'm just kind of noticing the position of the blues in the pot. And this is a kind of a combination of um, ultramarine and, um, I don't know, that is hard blue, I think. Or cadmium, one of them, one or other of them. I'm just going to lift off some because I feel like I've gone too blue. I think it's that blue in the pot. And then there's the lovely opera rose that I've got on a piece of paper here. See that colour? And that's what I'm seeing. Kind of here, a few of the flowers are that colour. And the cyclone that's beside the daisy up here is also that colour. And then there's a touch of yellow in the pot as well up here. A bright lemony yellow. It's getting a little bit darker as we go down. The dark color, <clears throat> that dark color is over here as well, um, which is kind of helpful. It's outlining the um, edge of the daisy where it meets the pot. I'm just using that as the way to define some of the petals of the daisy first off. I don't know if that's giving that enough volume at all. Sometimes in the middle of the daisy is something similar to that colour. But the outer part of the inner bit is more of a lemony yellow. With that bleeding into it. And I suppose I might as well see if I can make a colour to describe the um those other chrysanthemums. The yellow ones that are over here. And maybe just first see if um if I could make the center of them. Just to, to err on the side of caution in case the yellow I had was the wrong color. And I do think it needed a bit more um, lemon in it, in it. And and probably just a little bit more clean water to make a color that feels a bit more like them. More water again, transparent yellow. 
when when yellow is um when yellow is mixed with with water when the white of the page shows through it it becomes even brighter or maybe oh and there's more up there there's also the bright yellow at the center of these smaller daisies up high here And then the center of the of the, the bigger white daisy, which has a touch, I think, of sap green inside in the middle of it too. Could put a touch of green into parts of the center of that one as well. And while I'm on the green chair, I suppose I might as well find the edge of the daisy as it meets the rest of the greenery. And as it meets the yellow flower that sits there. Mm. Kind of just working to bring in some clarity with line as well. touch of ultramarine blue on the corner of the brush there and just use that as a way to explain some of the darks in between the flowers here. So it's ultramarine blue but it's kind of mixed with the sap green hasn't it? So you get something that's a bit more like the eucalyptus Color, the leaves of the eucalyptus which are sitting back here and I'm just letting some of that color occupy the space of the eucalyptus leaf too while it's uh, available to me here and while I'm seeing it and I just draw the one that's being overlapped and then maybe I can draw a couple of these sideways ones here too and just explain the darker side of them. They're turned on their, on their sides. And then there's one that's kind of more facing us. Again. There's an extra little leg there by mistake. Maybe a part of that I think could be a bit more blue. And I suppose the back of that one could be darker too. Mm. And there's just some more eucalyptus shaped leaves going all the way up there and with a touch more of green Guess in here, maybe there's a little daisy like flower. It's still in bud, or maybe it's withered. The petals have fallen off, maybe. It's a small flower head. And I can just see the stem because it's brighter than the foliage behind. And I'm also going to find the stem of the larger one of those. I'll get some more of the sap green. I think it's a bit more of that kind of sap green that's a little touch of cadmium red to dull it a bit. I think that's what I'm seeing behind these flowers. And the water goes where the, the sorry, the pigment goes where the water is, obviously. So, um, 
conscious of where I placed the, the brush with the water on it and where I left it as well because that's explaining the shape. For example, here it's a triangle in between the petals. And there's the blue-green of the eucalyptus again on the other side. And there's a second smaller flower head too. And that's um, my boat here. Okay, and it's a kind of a cadmium I mean, yellowy colour. And just a bit of a mixture of mixture of greeny, yellowish, reddish, yellow. <laughs> kind of everything in there. But it's not hugely bright. <clears throat> I'm seeing a little touch of burnt sienna in the centre of this one. Maybe in the middle of this one too. I'm not sure what happened there with the blue. And that looks to me like that needs to be a yellow petal. So I might just do the simple thing and stick it on. Make this same color I want it to be, and then just stick it on. Over the blue. I didn't mean to be there at all. Oh, if it's dry, yeah. Oh, it could be a brighter, could be a brighter yellow. Anyway, it'll do. It's not blue anymore. That's not, not her. So a bright yellow down here in the pot. It gets a little bit more dull as it goes around the, the end there. Now, let's see if I can find some more dark little bits. I noticed one to the left of the white flower at the front there. So I'm mixing some Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna. No, Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine Blue together. And I'm making a... I'm just finding the dark where the daisy stops here. And the inside of the pot begins. There's something like that kind of a shape going on, I think. Um, yeah, and it's a little touch dark there too. And as we come up to meet the lighter stem, where the cyclamen stops and the stem begins, there are some lovely little touches of dark in there as well. And I think some bits in between these two stems 
can be darker as well. And just touching the brush on the paper and letting the pigment be pulled by the water. So where the brush lands and is lifted is a significant thing for describing the shape of the part. So it's, it's where the water goes, it's where the pigment flows. So we're meeting the last, yeah, so we're meeting the other daisy. And it has um, petals that extend into the area where the eucalyptus are. I'm describing the this white flower too by, by painting up to meet it. With the eucalyptus colour. Putting a bit more dark in here because this looks to me like it's just the background rather than eucalyptus, those two bits. And here as well. I want to distinguish between what's really this um, foliage and what's the space between the foliage. So I'm trying to find slightly different colours for the darks. And that's why I put some more brown into the mix here to make this dark colour that I'm seeing inside the rim. I could do that the same thing over here where it's less blue and more more dark brown, I think. And I might go to a slightly smaller brush now because I think there are some details that I'd like to explain in the flowers themselves. I think because I started with all of this colour down here, I'm working to now enhance the flowers so that they're not um, fighting with all this colour. I'm going to lift some of those darks out and maybe make a little flower with them or something. So a nice pattern of flowers, blue flowers here on the breeze. And I just felt that the um, how the dark had accumulated was maybe a little bit deeper than I wanted it to be. So I'll just make a couple of flowers. Something with that colour is maybe going to be used along with, say, some of his own crimson to make um, something of a grey. I think I need a bit of cadmium yellow in there as well. I want to make it kind of a grey that will represent whatever darks I'm seeing in the white flower here. So I'm just going to find the line dividing the petals and consider the shape and the tone of the grey area here, where the petal is overshadowed by the other yellow flower and so it's not catching the light that way. And also the ones to the left of it and a little bit higher, a few of those are quite muted as well, they're, they're certainly not brightly catching the light. So I want them to feel a little bit less, a little bit more blue-grey. So I put in a little bit more of the ultramarine this time as we come over here. And there's a few petals going down this way that have some grey and also some lovely bright ones. So I'll just print to explain the um, division between some of these petals. And I think this call for a tiny a tiny bit of collage again of some really white paper to occupy the spaces that it covered in the first few moves. And by accident, you know. I think that he needs a touch more yellow here.
Well, maybe I've used the yellow that's on the brush to do the um, little bud on the left side, the darker side of the inside of this yellow daisy like flower up here. And then I'm just going to let, um, let these colours merge again. There's too much going on there. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that thing that I was saying about the, about the white. There's a daisy that's, there's a petal that's dropping way down below this white daisy that I want to capture. And I think one other one that's a bit longer. And the colour that I'm choosing to put on seems to be kind of blue-white really. Um, oh yeah, I remember too, there was a little patch of um, dark that bled up to higher than I wanted it to go. So I'm going to put my white petal on there too. Yeah, the other side of it is kind of nice too for um pattern. Might be only complicating things. Yeah, I don't think it needs that. Okay. I've also got a pencil here, I don't know if it works. Let's see now. I think some of this daisy might be best explained with a pencil line. I'm kind of catching some of the paint and pulling it out as well to let that be part of the mark. Which is kind of pleasing. And then there's a few quite light petals on the front here. But with um, darker ones behind. It's good fun, you know, using the collage. You could get kind of trigger happy with it, like, especially when, when I'm wanting here to enhance the flowers more than the flowers in the more than the flowers in the um on the on the pattern with the vase. Okay, no. Let's see about using the pencil over here too for this one. Let's take places anyway. Seems to be one of the ways at the moment of getting there quickly. And it's not as though it all needs to be outlined or anything, but I do want to find a little bit more clarity in the petals that I'm seeing and and recognise their location in relation to each other and the vegetation around them, the foliage around them. And that leads me to put another touch of white collage on Just the fact of it sticking out in relief means that it reads, I think, as though it's on the light anyway. So I'm not worried too much about it not being completely white paper. Um, and when I put one piece on, I kind of feel like putting a second bit on. So that it doesn't look in that, that kind of out of place in that flower. And possibly even a third bit be there. There, it's all right. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like I want to draw over dark 
fish land. So hopefully this will work now. And I'm just using the back of the paintbrush dipped into the Van Dyke brown. And let's see if it um if it comes out as a as anything. Okay, yeah, see it's it's making a bit of a line anyway. I feel I feel like I'm wanting something to um I'm wanting to draw things together. See if maybe the pencil dipped into that brown will work a bit better. So the paint is well watered down and I'm just um, using the pencil to pick up some of the paint and make a line with that. I want it to be darker than the pencil line is. I'm not so keen to use the particular um, you know, that kind of tentative line that we get from a pen or even from the pencil, I think. It's just that the pencil isn't dark enough, really. But I wanted something that was that had a kind of a lost and found quality to it. So this is this is filling the bill with um brown paint just flowing from the nib of the pencil. It's quite a lot on that, but now maybe I could lift some of that off. I don't think I needed to put quite so much on there. But it's letting the flowers be um, distinguished a little bit more too from the background and giving them a bit more um, giving them more substance or something and more tension and now I'm going to use some ultramarine blue I'm going to dip the pencil into the ultramarine blue because I want to use it to describe some of these eucalyptus leaves and I think they're best described with a blue line there's eucalyptus leaves on either side of these flowers I'm just twisting the pencil to release more of the liquid and to give me that organic mark I quite like the blue on the edge here too where it meets the vase because there's quite a bit of blue on the vase in the end. And I could use it to expand maybe one of the patterns there. But let's see, there's some bits that are kind of half lost on the way. I think it may be no harm to use a kind of a yellowish colour describe some of these. So this is I think yellow ochre or it could be green gold. Just to say these are this is the line describing some of the yellow flower petals. <coughs> and then just the lemon yellow. The sun just came out brightly there. Lovely. Just placing some yellow, lemon yellow paint on there now, really. These chrysanthemums are on their last legs. I may put a touch of that lemon yellow so I can get a big lump of that. I think maybe it's hard because this is still wet in the center, but I wanted that side of the I wanted that side of the daisy to have some more yellow to it. Maybe when it's dry I can do it. But for now it's only making it more um, obscure looking. Um 
want to see if this pen would work to clarify some tiny little bits here. I mean, it's quite bright with green, but just here and there to help me to get some bit of clarity in. to the brown actually because on this edge of the daisy it's really quite dark where the daisy meets the pot oh yeah I was going to do the eucalyptus was now down there just to describe the um, eucalyptus leaf that's coming out here in front there's an extension of um, eucalyptus discs, and the lovely disc shaped leaves. And I kind of like that occasionally the pencil marks come through as well. I mean, that eucalyptus was maybe a bit more dominant than I'd expected it to be with the blue. I wanted it to, I wanted it to drop down more than the daisy so that we have a feeling for the diagonal running through still. I'm gonna put a touch of it too on this side of that lovely cyclamen. Just a print of lemon yellow there, and here too. It's a kind of a lost and found painting, I think, this one. Some things becoming very lost and then just recovering them enough, hopefully. sense again. You can hear Lily stirring upstairs. She has to get a kind of an earlier bus because there's lots of traffic, traffic lights, temporary lights on the way to Ikea now. And she has to factor in an extra half an hour even although it's really by car it's only five minutes. So but Erin's working in town today and her, her commute is 40 minutes so she's got the car. And anyway, it's just the roadworks that are causing time from here to Straven, you know. Explaining the rim a little bit more clearly. I'm thinking I might just kind of surrender to it being a bit nondescript. Let it, let, to let it still have some 
or answer questions. Can I leave that leaf as a daisy actually? finished with a, an operation, petal operation. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna stop there. That's what happened so far. I might, might do another little bit to it, I don't know. But it was, it was nice to just um, have a little play about with it there. I've actually come across, um, here I want for God's sake, to say goodbye here. See ya. There's some more flowers from Erin's birthday. I want to put the flowers. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Bye.